Welcome everyone. As many of you remember during our initial review of the PlayStation 5, one of my biggest criticisms for the new console was the fact that it was advertised to come with 825 gigs of storage, but after the operating system was installed, it really only had 667 gigs. Now, the reason this was concerning really stemmed from the fact that there weren't a bunch of Gen 4 M.2 drives, storage drives, ready to go for the PlayStation 5 when it launched. So this meant people would have to resort to using USB solid state drives for the PlayStation 5, which by nature hinders the speed and performance of the console. Thankfully now, there are a bunch of these Gen 4 drives available for the PlayStation 5, like this Gigabyte Aorus 7000S. So I'm gonna cover the installation process as quick as possible, talk about the pros and cons of using a Gen 4 drive instead of a USB SSD, and then we're gonna look at some of the performance that we get from this and compare it to its biggest competition. Let's do it. So in Sony's official storage expansion guide, they make sure to note the importance of having the correct M.2 drive. It has to be Gen 4 with a built-in heatsink. To install, just lay the PlayStation 5 on its side with the disk drive upwards, or if you don't have a disk drive, just make sure the PlayStation 5 logo is face down. Place your right hand at the top corner of the cover and your left hand at the bottom left corner. You'll need to pull up and downwards while still stabilizing the PS5. It can be a bit tricky, but after you've done it once, it's pretty easy. Now we'll take a screwdriver and remove the expansion slot cover. Next, we'll remove the screw and spacer that are already installed. Then you'll be placing the spacer in the corresponding hole that fits your M.2 SSD's size. Then we just line up the M.2 drive with the notch on the connection terminal, push it all the way in. It's okay if the angle is slightly diagonal. Lastly, we use the screw that we took out to move the spacer to fasten the drive in place. Put the slot cover back on, slide that side cover back in, and the M.2 drive is installed. The next time you turn on the PS5, you should see the M.2 format page. So format that bad boy and you are done. Okay, so the benefits of using a Gen 4 M.2 instead of a standard USB drive. Gen 4 drives will help the PlayStation 5 maintain its optimal performance while gaming. Benefits ranging from faster loading times, whether you're downloading or transferring files, you can expect blazing speeds. I was transferring files in the 30 gig ballpark, consistently averaging only 30 seconds. It's also important to note that the PlayStation 5 is specifically designed so it can utilize storage of this caliber. So end game wise, you're helping the CPU get to and process that game data that's in storage as fast as possible. I mentioned this in one of my past videos, the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 have both geared their systems to enable game developers to expand the horizon of what we consider to be the norm in the games that we play. So with this new processing structure, using the best possible storage and high speed channels to access it, I'm definitely expecting to see larger environments, more complex game structure, and the full utilization of these consoles' capabilities in the future games to come. So in the end, by expanding your storage with the best possible solution, a Gen 4 drive, you are gaining some level of speed and performance with your console. And there is an argument to be made for the affordability of USB storage devices in comparison to these Gen 4 drives. but for me, personally, if I ended up going with a USB storage device, I would end up wishing that I got a Gen 4 drive and I'd probably end up buying one later anyways. So that's just my personal take on it. Testing showed this Gigabyte Aorus hitting read speeds of 6500 MBS on average and write speeds right at the advertised 7000 MBS. Comparing this drive to its biggest competitors, like the Western Digital Black, the Sabriet Rocket 4 and the Samsung 980 Pro, the speeds are all nearly identical. Whether or not I'm writing to the drive or loading up games, speeds and frame rates were really close, clocking almost within tenths of a second of one another. So with nearly all of the Gen 4 storage devices that we tried with the PlayStation 5, we couldn't notice the biggest margin of difference between them, but when you start to compare these Gen 4 storage devices to USB storage devices, that's where you see a really big change as far as the speeds, transfer times, load times. It's just night and day. It's not the same level of efficiency and speed. And that's because this is what is prescribed for the PlayStation 5. It's what it calls for, it's what it wants, and it's what it's designed for. 
So that's why I definitely recommend if you're expanding your storage that you get a Gen 4. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask this in the comment section, so let's go ahead and get it out of the way. Which Gen 4 drives do I recommend? And for me personally, I would keep it name brand. When I'm talking name brand, like the Gigabyte or a 7000S or Western Digital Black or Samsung. Samsung makes some fantastic memory. As long as you're keeping it name brand, you are protecting yourself from not receiving the advertised product. Like there's a bunch of people online on YouTube who have advertised the ADATA storage devices for the PlayStation 5 as the best, cheapest storage device for the PlayStation 5. And it has been found through research, and I think Linus Tech Tips also did a video on ADATA. Uh, their storage devices don't always have the same components built onto the stick. So you could be getting different quality NAND built into that storage device, meaning you're not getting the advertised product or the advertised speeds that that product is capable of just because you went with the cheaper option. So when it comes to high quality, high performance storage, I would definitely keep it name brand, trusted quality. But in my testing, this 7000S was beating its competition in transfer speeds and load times by tenths of a second. So tenths of a second, probably not gonna notice it while actually using the console, but the numbers don't lie. It was winning those speed battles. So I was impressed by its performance. I do hope that this video has helped you in your decision-making process. If it has, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the content. It is greatly appreciated. Notification squad, you guys rock. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace.